let's talk about the thyroid gland as i mentioned earlier thyroid gland is an endocrine gland which is found at the anterior part of the neck as you can easily see here that this is the neck area while this is the thyroid gland now thyroid gland is the anterior most part of the neck it lies inferiorly to both the hyoid bone the thyroid cartilage and it is anterior to the cricoid cartilage now here is the thyroid cartilage while this is the cricoid cartilage now thyroid gland is divided into two lobes there is the right lobe and the larger left lobe and both of these lobes are joined together via a thin band of tissue of the same tissue that the both lobes are made of which is known as the isthmus or the bridge between the both lobes so these lobes lie both anteriorly and laterally in the neck and as they move downward they lie anteriorly to the trachea and as we go upward they lie anteriorly to the laryngeal cartilages that is the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage now embryologically the thyroid gland comes from the second pharyngeal pouch and as it moves from the second pharyngeal pouch it moves anteriorly and migrates towards the neck sometimes it leaves a duct known as the thyroglossal duct which usually uh, closes around the fifth week of gestation because it is around the third or fourth week of gestation that we see both the appearance and the completion of the thyroid gland now thyroid gland when seen from an another angle from the side we can easily appreciate both of its lobes which lie both anteriorly and laterally with the bridge which joins both of them now the position of the thyroid gland is very important because one it is one of the most vascularized gland or body or organ of the human being now it is vascular in nature because it is vascularized by the superior middle and inferior arteries from the external carotid artery because when it get its blood supply directly from the carotid artery the blood supply in the thyroid gland is extensive so is the drainage of the blood and the drainage of the blood is done via both the superior and inferior thyroid veins which then move towards the internal jugular vein so as you can see its blood supply comes and goes to the major vessels and because of this any type of trauma or surgery towards the thyroid gland is either done very delicately or any trauma can have dire ramifications due because the patient can um, die of the hemorrhage if left untreated because of its high vascular nature that's why the surgery is delicate and the trauma to the thyroid gland is very very dangerous